Hi guys, in this tutorial we're going to continue building on the reference um, tutorial for FXGL and we're going to continue building some stuff for the Asteroids game. This is the current state of the game. We have custom menu, we have a bunch of asteroids and we can shoot them. There are various um, interesting effects happening. And that's what you should have if you followed the previous, um, I think, four tutorials. So in this one, we're going to add um, complex views. So for each entity, we could have more than just a single view. And we're going to learn how to do that. And the next thing is we're going to add a few short-term effects, um, which are some player power-ups or some buffs that are applied to an entity for a short-term uh, period. But before we do that, first I'm going to update FXGL to the latest version, which is 11.8. Um, and we are going to then fix some incompatibilities. I think they're mainly just uh, package renaming things, so it shouldn't be that much of a problem. Right, let's see if we can run this. <coughs> Great, so now we're running um, the latest version of FXGL and I'm going to just disable the menu. Right, so first things first, uh, we are going to add a new view, which we'll do um, in the factory. The entity factory is the place where all the entities are spawned. This is the only place where this happens. Now each asteroid, I want to add just a new view, a new text that says asteroid, just as an example. I'm not going to keep it, but just to give an idea of how to just add views one on top of the other. As you can see, you just keep repeating the view and it will be added as a child node. So we're still following the same scene graph um, convention of Java effects. Uh, we can't see the text because probably it's in um, black. Let's go and change that. Set uh, fill color. Right, so now we can see that each asteroid when spawned has a uh, another view attached to it. It just says it's an asteroid, which is fine. Now, um, instead of doing that, something that is more useful perhaps is adding a um, health bar, which is um, common in games. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a, um, well, first of all, we need representation of health, which is what the health int component is going to give us. Uh, I'm going to say that each asteroid needs two hit points. And then I'm going to build HP view, which is a new progress bar. Um, which I'm going to use the um, FXGL progress bar. And does it take billion show changes? No, I don't want to show changes. That's really bad um, having billion parameters and constructors because just at the call site, you never know what that false means. So this will probably change when um, I will refactor the entire FXGL UI module. But it shouldn't have um, too many changes. So this API will still be valid, presumably. But this will have to go. 
Right, so uh, what do I want to do? Current value property, I'm going to bind to HP uh, value property. I can probably change the colors. Set background fill, um, about set fill with color um, light green for health. It's usually light green-ish. What else do I want to do? I need to set the maximum value. So set max value two. And let's do that first and then bind. And then, well, first we need to add the component, which is the HP component. And then we can add our view. Oh, actually, the order doesn't really matter. So I'm going to group views and then group components that way. Uh, okay, let's see if this runs. That's super long. I need to adjust the width and height. But it works, that's the main thing. So set with um, what's the width of the texture asteroid it's 89 let's go with 85 um the height was correct well it was all right um let's change the translation to uh, 90 so that's below the asteroid and the great thing about that is all of these are in local coordinate systems. Uh, well, that is, which means you can position it um, in exactly the same way as you would do in a normal JavaFX application. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So each asteroid has a health bar attached to it. it doesn't do anything at this point. Um, although we've, we said that each asteroid has two health points. This isn't actually honored because we don't do anything with it. Let's do something. <clears throat> this is where we kill the asteroid. This is where the collision between bullet and asteroid entity types is handled. So if I do HP um, asteroid get component health int component, there's also one for double health if you're representing your health points as a double. Get value. No, just get, I don't want that. So if HP is greater than one, then we don't want to destroy it. We still want to destroy the bullet. We want to damage the health by one, and then we just want to return all of that should only appear when health is at one. So now when we hit an asteroid, its health goes down to one, which automatically um, updates the view because we bound in um, the factory class, we bound the current value of the view, which is the progress view, progress bar thing, to the current value property of um, HP, which is great, because then automatically things can update. Uh, when we change the model, the view updates automatically. Right. So that's an example of adding a complex view. Uh, in fact, it's a very um, reasonably sophisticated example because earlier, as I showed you, you can just add view and then you can add any node. Uh, it will still work just fine. Now on to uh, short-term effects for entities. Suppose we want to add a slow-mo effect to our bullet. I think that's the bullet, right? We don't have many um, entities. Yeah, so this is where the bullet gets created, our laser type bullet. Um, 
first of all, I'm going to add the time component, which is the component that um, manages the time per frame ratio for each entity. By default, it's 100%, which means it gets all the, the default time per frame uh, amount. If we set it to 0 0.5, for example, then it's going to slow down all of the updates, all of the components for that entity. Next thing I'm going to do is add an effect component, which is the component that deals with various short-term effects applied to an entity. Now, with this thing in place, I can, when spawning, um, I can add a slow mo component or a slow mo effect. Let's try that. So, effect component. Effect component start effect, a new slow time effect. The ratio is, let's make it super slow, 10%. Duration um, for just one second. <clears throat> and this is a built-in effect. You can also build your own effects. For example, you can say, my effect extends. Uh, make sure to extend the right effect though. It's inside the components, um, inside the DSL components package. And then you'll need to add some stuff like what you do on uh, start of the effect, what you do on the end. Um, it will probably also expect a constructor to pass in um, the duration so that you know how long the effect um, lasts. But that's how you would create your own effect and then potentially the component start effect new my effect and then whatever the effect will do we'll explore that in um, in, a, in a moment before doing that I want to check if this built-in component uh, built-in effect works so when I shoot this will be called new bullet will be spawned and it should spawn with nope entity must not be null Okay, so when we start the effect, uh, the entity has not been registered yet. Okay, in which case we need to run this uh, after the entity is ready. Entity set on active. Is there a fluent API for this? On click? No, it's probably at one. But for now, we'll have to deal with this version. <clears throat> so when we tried to start the effect here, the effect component did not have an entity um, to which the component is attached, which is fair enough because we're attaching it here. And then we don't want to start it immediately, so which means we can start it when the entity is added to the world which is what set on active does. Nice, I can actually get the Java dot port. Uh, set a callback for when it is added to the world. Yep, that's exactly what I need. So when I shoot, the bullet should have a slow effect attached to it, which is working fine. And then after one second, the bullet reaches its um, 1.0 ratio, which is sort of the normal 100% um, update. However, um, I'm going to now show you how to create your own component, uh, sorry, your own effect, which is going to be, I'm just going to leave it as my effect, I guess, or um, super slow time effect. How about that?
duration is going to be um, half a second and on start we're going to take the time component set its value to 005 basically super slow and on end I'm not going to return it to 100% I'm going to uh, push it down to 300% how about that so it's going to fly super fast new super slow time effect okay let's go with that see how that works out not too bad it's very interesting behavior one way to achieve uh, super fast bullets it's not very intuitive though uh, when you're playing so I might have to uh, revert to the original um, but at least you have an idea of how to uh, construct your own effects um, using the built-in API. Okay, so in this tutorial we looked at how to add complex views or how to add more than just one view um, to an entity. At the same time we explored just a little bit uh, around the built-in views, built-in components, and we also added our custom effect which gives you two callback functions. Uh, one is called when the effect starts, uh, when the effect starts, and the other one is called when the effect ends. So it allows you to modify certain entity values um, of either properties of entities or um, its components, and so on. And we'll see if there are anything, uh, if there's anything else we can add to this example, or whether I should start a different type, different genre um, reference tutorials. Thanks for watching.